Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to try to determine the gravitational potential in the region between A and B of the spherical shell, inside the material of the spherical shell itself. In the previous two videos, we found the gravitational potential inside the cavity, realizing that it was a constant, and we found the gravitational potential outside the spherical shell. Here you have the two equations that we ended up with when we integrated the equation to determine the gravitational potential when we're outside the spherical shell and inside the cavity. And notice that we end up with an equation that said that the gravitational potential was equal to minus 4 pi rho g divided by 3r times r cubed integrated from a to b to get all the contribution to figure out the gravitational potential outside the sphere we had to integrate over all of the material of the sphere when we found the gravitational potential on the inside inside the cavity we did the same thing we end up with an equation we integrated it we end up with minus 4 pi rho g over 2 r squared again evaluated from a to b because we wanted the effect of all of the material how it affected a point inside the sphere so when we then graphically represent those two we end up with a constant value inside the sphere and a value that depended on one over the distance when we're outside the sphere and somehow we now have to find the equation that describes the curve that will connect these two notice that we have to have the exact same value over here when we're at a and the exact same value over here when we're at b and we need to make sure that the derivative at those two points are the same as well. In other words, the slope has to be exactly the same at those two points and the values of the equation have to be exact same way. So how do we determine that? Well, what we can do is we can actually add the contribution of both equations together, but we have to change the value of the limits. Let me explain. When you're outside the sphere and then you move inside the sphere right here, the contribution of the gravitational potential will only be for the material that's inside the spherical region at a distance r away from the center. So instead of then integrating from a to b, we have to integrate from a to r, and that's what we do. Oh, I'm sorry here. Um, yep, okay, I was looking at the wrong equation. So I have to integrate from a to r for the contribution of the outside gravitational potential. Then we have to add to that the contribution of being on the inside, but now we also have to change the limits of integration because as you move outward in this direction, you can only take into account the material that's from R to B, not what's inside because you're beyond that, and so you assume that that material doesn't exist. So when you add the two contributions together, you will end up with the equation that describes the gravitational potential in this region right here. So all we have to do is change this limit to r and change this limit to r as well and then add the two contributions and then we have an equation that describes the gravitational potential right there. So let's go ahead and do that and then to make sure we're correct we're going to figure out the values of those endpoints to make sure we have the correct value in each case. All right starting out with this one right here so this becomes equal to minus four times Plug in the upper limit, we get big R cubed minus A cubed. And over here, the gravitational potential. Notice that this is the contribution of the outside equation. This is the contribution of the inside equation, which is equal to minus 4 times B squared minus R squared. So when we add those two together, notice we have a minus 4 pi rho g that's common for both. So we're going to say that the total on the inside the material between A and B is simply going to be the sum of the outside contribution plus the inside contribution. And so that's minus 4 pi rho g times, so here we end up with r cubed divided by 3r minus a cubed divided by 3r and then we add to that plus b squared over 2 and minus r squared over 2. Simplifying that notice that this r will make that an r squared and an r squared divided by 3 minus an r squared divided by 2 well that gives us a minus r squared divided by 6 so this cannot be written as minus 4 pi rho g 
times, well, we have a b squared over 2. Combine these two together, that gives us a minus r squared over 6. And here we get a minus a cubed divided by 3r. And this here is the gravitational potential between the regions of A and B. Now, just to make sure we're correct, now let's go ahead and let's replace, let's make R an A, so when we let R equals A, then we should get the gravitational potential of the inside equation. If we let R equals B, then we should get the gravitational potential for the outside equation at those limits. So let's go ahead and try that. So when R, becomes equal to a, this quantity right here will become the following. So then what's inside the brackets? We get a b squared over 2. Here when r becomes an a, we get a squared divided by 6. And when r becomes an a, we get a, a squared divided by 3. And that's so we have a minus a squared over 6 and a minus a squared over 3, so that would be 2, 3, that would be an a squared over 2, so we get minus a squared over 2. Let's get rid of this to make it a little cleaner. And notice, that would be the contribution from the inside when r goes to a, and sure enough, when we plug in a b and an a here, we get b squared over 2 divided by a squared over 2, so we get the very same value that we get right at that point. So we're good there. What happens when r becomes b? When r becomes a b, then what's inside the brackets will give us a b squared over 2. And this will be a b squared divided by 6, so that would be minus b squared divided by 6. And over here, we get that would be a b, so we get minus a cubed, minus a cubed over 3b. And a b squared over 2 minus b squared over 6, that would be a b squared over 3. So this becomes equal to a b squared over 3 minus an a cubed over 3b. And notice that if we go to this equation right here, and we plug in the upper limit, we get a b cubed divided by 3b, that would be b squared over 3, which is what we have. And when plugging the lower limit, we get a cube over 3r, or 3b, which is what we have there as well. And so you can see that, yes, this equation that we ended up with does indeed equal the gravitational potential at this limit and the gravitational potential at that limit. So we found the right equation, and that's how it's done.